This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Well, hello there, and welcome back. In this lesson, what we're going to be taking a look at is color. Uh, how to color correct clips, how to change the color in clips, how to manipulate color in clips, how to do a whole bunch of stuff with color. And the first thing you need to understand before we even get started is that all of the decisions you will make are subjective. They are not objective. There are no numbers because we all look at color differently. The red you see may be different from the red I see, which will be different from the red my friend sees, which may be different from the red your friend sees, that sort of thing. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you are working with color, especially color correction, you are affecting an entire clip. This is not Photoshop where it's an image. It is a clip. So if the clip is three seconds long and you make a change to the midtones, that's going to ripple throughout the midtones of the entire clip. So let's get started. And to get yourself started, I want you to open up the levels.aep file located in your Lesson 8 exercise folder. And when the file opens, you'll see two side-by-side -side clips. One is the original. That's the one this here is on the right. It's in a layer that's locked, as is the word original. I want you to use this as a reference clip so that you can see the changes you are making. But if you scrub through, you can see, you know, there are the Alps. That was shot in Lauterbrunn, and I was there this summer, and it was just spectacular. And I thought I'd share it with you. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying color correction to this clip. So what you want to do is get over to the uh, effects and presets, twirl down color correction, and scrub down and look for levels. And then apply levels to the unlock clip, the one on the left. And when you let go, there you go. There's the histogram. Now, a histogram shows you tonal distribution inside a clip. Now, in Photoshop, it shows you tonal distribution inside an image. If you scrub through the clip, watch what happens to the histogram. The histogram comes to life. This is what I meant about you can make a change here, but it's going to ripple through the entire clip. Let me give you an example. Right here, there are not that many blacks. So I'm going to grab the black point and I'm just going to, you know, add some detail. And it's going to look pretty good all the way through until we get to the end of the clip where the building is suddenly blown out. So you've got to be aware of this stuff. Okay, I'm going to click reset. So let's take a look at what levels is all about. The levels is input and output. Input is right here. This is black, shadow, midtone, gamma, white, highlights. And if you move them in or out, you affect the values of the pixels that are behind it. These two dots here, this dot here shows you the grayscale, the dot at the top throws in the RGB colors as well. So you can see the distribution there. Now, if you were to uh, scrub through, and let's just scrub through just about there, where the histogram sort of drops off, if I move the black point slider to that point where the blacks start, what I have essentially done is crunched the blacks. And what that means is, is that every pixel that has a value of zero to whatever this is, and we'll just assume that this is a value of 41. You can see it right here. So all pixels between zero and 41 now have a value of zero. And what that will do is darken everything that has a pixel in between here. So you lose all the grayscale that's in here. Same thing with the midtones. So you can drag the gamma across and affect the gamma. Okay, so you can see that it's not really having a huge effect on the blacks, but it really is affecting the midtones. If you move towards the whites, you're extending the gamma on the black side, and if you extend it towards the black, you're extending the white on the other side. Now, if I move the white in, it's the same thing as I've done with the black. As you can see, the maximum value is 255, and if I move it in, say, to uh, 220, all pixels that have a value of 220 to 255 now have a value of 255. I have clipped or crunched the whites. Okay, I'm going to reset. These sliders here are input and output. Output, as you notice, I'm just moving everything towards highlights. 
here, and here I'm moving everything towards the shadows on output. There's no midtone in here. Now you can actually do it by the numbers as well. So if you're looking for very fine granularity, you can do it that way. Or I don't know why, but you got your own slider here too. And you can do that with the black, you can do it with the white, you can do it with the gamma. Watch when I move the gamma. See, there's that middle slider moving. I'll put the black, that would be this one here. Watch what happens. See? Brightens up, darkens up. Now the thing that you can do with these that you can't do just manually moving the sliders, as you saw, is move into negative territory. Now remember, this has a really bad effect. It's almost, I almost call it color correction physics. For every effect, there's an equally opposite and ugly implication. In this case, if I go to the end of the clip, here's the ugly implication. I've completely lost most of the building here. The mountain looks great, but the building disappeared. You're going to reset. Same thing here. I can see. I can move right off the scale if I so choose. Now, the other thing I want you to be aware of is that when you move the black, you also move the gamma. See that middle slider there? You're always moving gamma in here. So the object of the game is to try and get an even distribution, almost like a bell curve, of pixels or tonal distribution on the levels histogram here. Uh, you're never going to get it exact. If you do get it exact, uh, you've been very lucky. You can also scrub through and make minor changes, just minor, minor changes. And I'll bring up a little bit of detail here. So there you go. There's how you use levels. It's a great tool to start with because it gives you a visual representation of tonal distribution. You can uh, make your changes. You can fix things. You can do all sorts of things with it. In the next lesson, we're going to get even more precise, and we're going to use curves. I'll see you there.